Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting comics loving edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. I am delighted on this episode to be talking with uh, someone who just has a unique vision, uh, a way of telling stories that I love, and uh, particular titles that just do interesting, interesting things, which I always appreciate, and that is comics creator Kwanzaa Osaijifo. Oh, well, thank you, Kwanzaa, for jumping in and talking with me for a few minutes. Sure. Thanks for uh, having me on. My pleasure. My pleasure. Of course, uh, Black would be the title to mention one of the first ones, as well as Deadbeats, which is a very, very interesting concept. Love that concept. Um, and then also you uh, have worked with Mark Wade, no small name in the comics industry, on Ignited. Um, so anything that I've missed, uh, I'm sure we'll get around to and, and mention as we're talking through any titles that you'd like to throw in. But curious by means of the first question, as someone who's creating in the industry, what makes comics this unique way of telling the stories that you want to tell? Um, I think with comics, you're just allowed to have a bit of a more unfettered imagination and realm to play in, you know? It's mm -hmm. like it's it's definitely a symbiotic relationship between as a writer between yourself and the artists who work on the book. But, you know, there's there's no there's no billion million dollar budget to worry about. There's no studio that you have to, like, you know, go back to if you're kind of like over budget. If you want to, you know, draw some crazy like, you know, battle like in space that then suddenly goes underwater, that then suddenly goes, you know, on land. <laughs> You can just do that as long as, you know, the, the artist is not, you know, <laughs> strained with your crazy visions. But I think there's, you know, there's an interesting amount of being able to both tantalize the imagination, but let people um, kind of see the vision at the same time, you know? Uh -huh. So it's like, it it's it's something that I think growing up as, as a rather avid reader of, novels when you would sometimes get that one illustration it would uh -huh. be just enough of a spark to keep you going through the book like my favorite in one in one of my first like books is uh alice in wonderland and oh yeah the illustrations in that book that would just pop up every once in a while would be just enough you know mm -hmm. and comic books is comic books is just like those illustrations are like a piece of candy and comic books is like an ice cream sundae you know yeah <laughs> if i could yeah. compare them in terms of like what you get so I, I think I think that's what really makes it such a unique way of telling a story because you can you can just play in different ways. Yeah, I love that. And I'm just picturing like the Jabberwocky inset mm -hmm. picture, which is probably like my favorite part of that that entire book. Um, great metaphor there as well. Uh, so curious about the folks that have sort of collaborated with you that have been some of the best people in the industry so far, as well as uh, folks that have supported your creative vision. Yeah, I mean, my team on Black are friends, associates, people who I worked with professionally during my stint as an editor between Marvel and DC. Um, and uh, I met Tim Smith when I was at Marvel and we reconnected at a Mocha Fest <laughs> and, I, and just I really loved like his approach to like character design and aesthetic it was something unique that I didn't see a lot of in comic books um, particularly when you think of comic books solely as like superheroes and stuff there's just become a very like you know, known language for drawing figures, for drawing costumes and stuff. And Tim was, you know, heavily influenced not only by like things like anime, but also steampunk, but also like, you know, um, African American culture. So there was something really unique in his design work that really made me think, okay, this is the person I want to work with on designing this world of black and pulling it together. And then Jamal Idol is just such a masterful storyteller. Uh -huh. that, I had the pleasure of working with him on the Ray during the new uh, uh, 52 uh, DC initiative. And just watching him work and seeing what an amazing storyteller he is and just how much of a craftsman he is blew me away. I was like, there's no way I'm not working with this person if I ever have the opportunity to work with this person. 
And Kari Randolph is someone who I'd known in the industry for a while as a friend, always admired his artwork. Um, and, you know, I, I think our running joke had been for a long time that people used to confuse us for each other, even though we don't look anything alike. And that was kind of how we bonded. But I've, I've just always felt like he is like a, a stunning artist, you know, in terms of like his pieces. They, you know, his interior works fantastic as well. But, you know, Kari is definitely someone who can draw a piece that's just going to stop people in their tracks. And the fact that I was able to, you know, not only work with these people and befriend them in my professional career as a, you know, a staff person, uh, the fact that I was able to, I don't know, convince them that Black, it, it wasn't much of a convincing, like, I was actually surprised at, like, how quickly they all agreed to jump on board, um, yeah. was was something that made me really think that we were on to something. So mm -hmm. they, they're they some of the definite best that I've ever worked with. And then, as you mentioned before, like Mark Wade, that was just like a, a rare opportunity in being approached uh, by humanoids to mm -hmm. create a universe for them and then have Mark Wade, you know, be brought in to like help really champion the efforts that we were already doing and then write the flagship book with him. You know, especially when it's something that like you've created to have like someone of his stature come in and like write along with you is just sort of like, okay, who's writing this? <laughs> I don't mean, like, I don't know. Right. But he's such, you know, a, an amazing steward of like the vision and, and such a great collaborator that it was, it was a really wonderful experience where I got to learn as much as I got to, you know, have fun and just create. Yeah. I imagine there there's nothing better in terms of learning, growing than getting to write alongside somebody or create alongside somebody that way. Absolutely. I mean, being like probably one of the bigger Flash fans in the world to like uh -huh. work with Mark Wade was just sort of like, I don't know how much time we should spend working on this story versus me just asking you questions about like impulse. <laughs> right, <laughs> like... right. Yeah, man, definitely. Uh, that's probably my favorite area of Flash, but but we'll save that if, if uh, Mark Wade ever comes on. Um, <laughs> so uh, as far as the worlds of uh, Black and Ignited, uh, and may I say, I also love the hat as well. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Curious about the, the creative process and, and what it was kind of like behind the scenes on those books. So for Black, I mean, it was Black had quite a long history because it was an idea that I'd come up with like 10 years prior to, you know, the world finding out about it. Um, I say the world as if the entire world knows about it. I, the comics industry, <laughs> the comics world. Um, finding out about it but it was something that I you know sat on for quite a bit because I was you know in the midst of my career between Marvel and DC and you know it's even though a lot of people transition into writing and stuff like that it was kind of frowned upon to like do that stuff while you were working as an editor you know in the industry or at least it that's what was impressed upon me uh -huh. either way um, you know when I was no longer at DC it just sort of struck me like you know, I've got and I I've got all these ideas that I want to write, and it was actually my my partner, my wife, who was just like, just just pick one. She's like, they all sound great. <laughs> I think she was just tired of me telling her about it. She's like, they all sound great. Just pick one, and black was the one that just kind of bowled up to the surface. Yeah. Nice. I, I love the story of a a loved one, a partner that supports the vision, and uh, so much wisdom there as well. Absolutely. She's just like, just, just go for one of them. You're, you're, you're great. Do it, do the thing. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, the, the process became like, you know, bringing the team together and drafting like what would be the proposal for it. Um, and then in terms of like just collaborating and writing with the team, you know, it was like me and Tim just kind of talking about like who the characters were, like, you know, what their backgrounds were. I wrote profiles on like every single character, even ones that only appeared for like a brief moment and maybe only had a line or no lines at all I would just write sort of what the motivation for all of them was you know to the extent that I actually have to reference it myself now because I'll forget <laughs> and I'm like oh man I'm glad I wrote all this nonsense so I can go back and check because you know it really helps to ground the story sometimes um and then you know working with Jamal I'm not someone who likes to write elaborate scripts you know where I try to detail the panel and do all the work for it I I I trust Jamal as like a visual storyteller and almost like a director. It's like, I've written a screenplay and mm -hmm. you're going to like, you know, execute the vision with like Tim 
mostly being like design and prop and all the stuff like here here's the tech here's the gear here's the characters and what they look like and then jamal saying like okay now you know that we've got we got costume we've got makeup we've got all this i know i'm describing it as a film but that was kind of like you know the, how we went about it um and just let him go you know and uh -huh. mostly it was like me just sort of writing what would happen on a page without giving any sort of panels or anything like that and dialogue so that he could kind of get the pace of like how people might be speaking between you know um any of the scenes that were going on so that was kind of like you know the process in a nutshell and then of course you know sarah our editor you know <laughs> hoping to rein me in where i would sometimes get a little out of pocket in terms of like <laughs> You know, dialogue, a fight scene, or maybe maybe even sometimes a plot point here or there where it's just like, she's just sort of like, I don't think anybody's going to buy that. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, that was, that was the, that's the overall process for that. With Ignited and um, all of the um, H1 books, it was a really collaborative process between me, Carla, and Yannick, essentially like, so just coming up with this world where, you know, I, I really emphasize the idea of like, what if we were in a world where there were superpowers, but we had all of the trappings of our modern world. Uh -huh. like, there is nobody to like repair New York if it gets destroyed. Like on that level, you know, I, I've always, I think we've all as like comic fans always felt like, man, New York gets fixed up pretty fast, you know, and yet <laughs> right. if, you, if you're here and the subway breaks down, you're just like, okay, I guess I'm just out. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, New York could get attacked by aliens every other week and it's just like, everything's back to normal. So it's this sort of thing where it's like, I wanted there to be like a bit more of, a, you know, a, a backlash. And that's kind of where we started with Ignited, where it's like, we took something that's, you know, very present in our real world, which are these unfortunate, like, you know, mass shootings at schools and saying like, this is something that changes people like forever. You know, there is no going backwards after something like that. But in this particular one, you know, the catalyst that came out of that were superpowers for a group of kids who then are trying to navigate high school, but then also navigate what happens around schools and communities after that, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And deciding like, how are we going to not only, you know, navigate these powers, but then navigate like this world where people just have their own fears and agendas and like, you know, concerns about what's happened to us <laughs> yeah. like, and so it was it was something that you know felt very like real to all of us and that we could really sink our teeth into and then with omni and um strange lands we really wanted to do something where with omni i wanted to create like a superhero comic or, or a supernatural comic where the hero did not solve things with theatrical heroics Mm -hmm. she's just the smartest person in the room and her intelligence level just requires her very often to take a pause and it operates on all of the different levels of intelligence so emotional intelligence like you know traditional intelligence and just like her mind breaks up and tries to like figure out the best way to like handle like certain situations which is both helpful and confusing you know <laughs> because that's a lot that's a lot of stuff to process and then with strange lands it was more like you know, how can we do something where it's like, you know, two people essentially in like one of those kind of not a romantic comedy necessarily or but more like a love hate moonlighting kind of thing. But they've got this power that forces them to stay together or else it'll just pull them back together either way and cause like destruction. So it's like <laughs> we have to stay together because if we get pulled apart, we'll get yanked together and like blow something up, you know, so <laughs> it, it, it just created this interesting dynamic you know, for of a universe where there were just these really consequential things that could happen to these characters as opposed to just what you see a lot of comic comics, which is just sort of a free freewheeling destruction. <laughs> you know, freewheeling uh -huh. powers, which is sort of like, yeah, I don't know, like you just threw that person into a wall. You <laughs> kind of kill the average person. Yeah. Every time Spider Man gets thrown into a brick wall, I'm just sort of like, uh he's not invulnerable. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's like a regular dude, and that was brick. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow. So uh, that was kind of the, the process behind all of that. And then just working with Mark on that, just having him, you know, be a partner and a guide throughout that process. And just seeing somebody who could just really, you know, masterfully 
write a script and a plot alongside you without the struggles that me that I have as like a younger writer <laughs> where I just like right. overthink everything he's just like pop, 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 pop. and I'm just like oh, okay I guess we're done with that <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. then just have that confidence, you know, that that it's it's the right thing. Whereas I would just be like, I oh, don't know, I'm going to rewrite this four, my, four or five more times. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's very cool to hear about how the stories come together, the ideas come together, and uh, the process. And it sounds like you have a little bit of perfectionism in, in the writing as well. Yeah, I mean, there was actually a point like not too long ago where I had thought about going back and rewriting Black, you know, <laughs> like, because that's my thing. Like, I would go back and rewrite everything I've written if I could. But, you know, I finally thought about it. So, like, that makes absolutely no sense <laughs> to do, you know. Um, and what I could really do is just focus on, you know, the third book in the trilogy, you know, and how I'm going to, you know, sort of cap off this universe and, and, and what I've created. So in doing black and in following up with white, you know, this third book is really going to be a culmination of what was set in those two books while being thematically a bit different. So I think it's going to be surprising for people to, to kind of see what the story evolves into. Yeah. But looking forward to it. And you anticipated my last question, which is what is next creatively? And then there's a, a part two to that of where people can go to learn more. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's what I'm working on right now, along with some other stuff, um, because I think, you know, during the, during the pandemic, that was like such a curveball, I think, for everybody. And like we had that that's when white actually came out. So the, the trade will be coming out this year and uh hopefully like we'll get to work on the next book uh sometime this year and maybe have it out by next year as well but that's kind of been the, the focus right now is like working on that and then and seeing where things go when when, when we wrap that up because i feel like it's going to end in a place where there'll be a lot of questions <laughs> yeah yeah always a good place to end yeah <laughs> Um, well, well, thank you so much for the time. Did we miss anything that you want to make sure to mention before we close um, out? I don't believe so. I mean, if people want to find uh, me online, my name is my URL. You can find some of my stuff, Um I'm kind of on social media, but not as much anymore. Definitely not really on Twitter, but I do Instagram a little bit. So my handle there is Kwanzaa, K-A-W-A-N-Z-E-R. <laughs> great, great. And the same thing on like, uh, what is it, Blue Sky or Threads or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I don't talk about comics quite as much on those channels. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, they, they seem to be picking up. Those channels are, uh, I'll post something there every now and then, but uh, I'll be looking for you on there when they do take on new life. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you again for the time, Kwanzaa. Thank you for the talk uh, and glad to have you back anytime. Awesome. I would love to be back maybe when the next book comes out. Sounds great. Sounds great. It's a plan. <laughs>